Okay, kids, here we have another professional gun review with gun expert Dean Winchester. Like I've said in the past, I am overweight, bald, and have a goatee. So, what we have here, this, this weapon, this is a Ruger Super Blackhawk. See how it's black? And the barrel is super long. That's where the name comes from. This is a 10.5 inch barrel. It's chambered in 44 Magnum, which 44 Magnum until the introduction of the 10 millimeter was the most powerful handgun in the world. Look at that. This is a single action. You have to pull the hammer back every time. See how it makes those cool clicking sounds, just like in the movies? Like, right before Alec Baldwin shoots you? Oh, yeah. Before he commits involuntary manslaughter? Um, here we go, kids. We can see we will measure the weight of this weapon. Let's see. Zero out the scale. Carefully place the weapon on the balance. 3.22 pounds. Hmm. Leave a comment if you think that's a lot of pounds. I'm not sure. This particular Ruger Super Blackhawk was made in 1979, which by no coincidence is the same year that the state of Ohio paid out over $600,000 to the victims of one of the worst mass shootings in U.S. history. You should Google that. And it's also the year that McDonald's introduced the Happy Meal. <laughs> kind of ironic. Anyway, I used to use this weapon to shoot jackrabbits. They don't have jackrabbits where I live now, so I don't use it for that. But I would shoot extremely hot loads. 200 grain Hornaday XTPs, loaded with enough 2400 to flatten the, actually flatten the primers out to where the primer would look like a spent 22 short. Really flat. As a result of all that insane abuse, um, eventually the gun, I noticed that uh, it wasn't in time. It wouldn't even lock up if you'd rotate it slowly, you know. And uh, anyway, not only that, but if you looked down the bore, which, uh, I'm going to include some pictures of what I'm talking about because I just, I'm unable to photograph it without a bore scope, and I don't know what I did with mine. Anyway, basically what it is, if you look down the bore, so if you look down the bore, what you should be able to see is just the recoil shield with the, the firing pin and the opening for the firing pin. If you can see either side, of the chamber, then uh, you have an alignment issue, meaning that the cylinder is not lined up with the bore. And uh, I mean, obviously that's not a good thing for accuracy, but it's even a worse thing for longevity of the weapon. And the reason for that is, is because when the bullet passes from the mouth of the chamber into the forcing cone, which coincidentally, that's why they call it a forcing cone, um, because back in the day, they couldn't get this shit right, and they were pretty much all misaligned. Well, most of them are today, even. Um, if they're correct, it's just by luck. But when the bullet passes from the, from the cylinder into the forcing cone, it forces the cylinder to line up with the barrel. When that happens, depending upon which direction it's out of alignment, it's going to force, it's going to impart a torque, uh, a twisting moment on the cylinder and force it to line up. And that twisting force is going to then impart a force on the, the bolt or the uh, cylinder, cylinder stop, depending upon who, who you listen to. I'll show you just for uh, those of you kids that are not internet gun experts, let's disassemble this field strip, this weapon. And um, so if you see here, this right here, this little piece, that right there is what fits into these little slots 
and it pretty much positions the cylinder in its rotational axis with respect to the bore. Anyway, what will happen is it will beat the snot out of this and eventually wear it to where this doesn't line up. And um, anyway, that's what happened to this thing over the years. And uh, I purchased a oversized cylinder stop or bolt, whatever, from, um, I think it was Power Custom was the name of the company. And then um, I got that installed and then fitted it, which means sanding on it ever so slowly, um, so that it would fit, not only fit into the little rectangular slots on the cylinder, but it biased it, you know, to where it would line up properly. So, hooray, this now lines up properly. Um, I'll include some pictures here because I'm not able to photograph it that well. So you kids know what I'm talking about. But if you, um, if you are revolver shopping and you're in a, you know, a gun store somewhere, you can, come on, get in there. Look at that. Look at that. Whoever said that they used to change these things out really fast is an idiot. Come on now. Come get, get in there. Get in there, you dog. Look at that. Well, look at that. It's backwards, dumbass. See? There you go. <laughs> yep. Well, I probably need to trim my goatee. What can I say? Um, okay. Stick that bad boy in there. Anyway, check them when you're in a gun shop. You know, get some light behind you. Look down there and just see. I bet you most of them you look at are going to be out of alignment. I've looked at, uh, I have friends with revolvers from the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. One is flawless and the other is out of alignment. That's right. So most people don't even know that's an issue. But um, yeah, check it out. So would I recommend this gun? No. The 10 millimeter is way more powerful and is capable of killing many more things. I, uh, I only have this just as uh, a keepsake. It's pretty much obsolete and worthless. Um, speaking of obsolete and worthless, let's uh, do a little size comparison with my original Colt Walker. Look at that. It's bigger than the Colt Walker. Isn't that amazing? Yep. Anyway, if you like the video, subscribe, like, leave a comment. Um, even if it's a, a shitty comment, I love them all. Thanks for watching.